thanks to all of you for being here. Welcome to the YOL Work From Home Wellbeing uh, series of webinars and conversations. Um, very happy to be invited by David to participate in it. And uh, we're gonna be talking about partnerships, um, business partnerships, and in particular, uh, you know, what is it about? What is the opportunity presented by partnerships? And I just wanna start by giving a little bit of context of what led me to be here in particular. So I'm professionally a startup lawyer. I work with growth companies and uh, in that work, work with founding teams on a regular basis and form their partnerships and help grow their companies. And as part of that work, uh, we have done and dealt with a lot of partnership uh, breakups, a lot of dissolutions, a lot of co-founder disputes. It's a regular and has been a regular part of the practice for a very long time. And they're very difficult situations. They're bound up as they are in a lot of emotional terrain, but also professional and financial they're some of the toughest situations that we see. And usually I get engaged as an attorney at the very tail end of these conflicts when kind of everybody's decided to part ways and they're using, they're, you know, hiring a lawyer to work out the details of how to separate and so forth. And, you know, at the same time in my non-legal life, I've spent a lot of time in the area of psychology and relationships and personal development and so forth and went through this own progression uh, um, and got married and so forth and I I began to see an overlap you know in the issues that uh, I was confronting uh, and working through for myself and what my clients were facing in their partnerships and um, you know it occurred to me that you know, for all of us, relationships are, and particularly in, intense relationships like business partnerships, but really all of our closest, most intimate and intense relationships present just tremendous challenges and tremendous opportunities. Uh, they're really two sides of the same coin. And uh, I, I had a personal longing to really offer more to my clients who are facing these struggles, more than just the legal mechanics of separating, but really just um, a, a kind of support that I didn't see that a lot of, a lot of them had, you know? So with Chris, who's on this call, uh, we, we started a, a community really called Co-Founder Dynamics. Uh, and I talk about it a community because that's really what it is. It's a shared conversation. Uh, and dialogue about the challenges and opportunities presented in partnerships um, and and business these these and business relationships and the hope and the mission is that in providing a community of inquiry uh, a community that seeks shared understanding uh, and and one of mutual support it would better enable all of us as professionals uh, to, you know, kind of weather the storm, so to speak, to navigate the challenges, the emotional challenges, the human challenges of our closest working relationships with more grace, with more wisdom, with more understanding. Um, and, and that's what we're, um, that's what this little fledgling effort, you know, is kind of all about. Uh, so, in the spirit of dialogue and in the spirit of conversation, I wanna just encourage everybody to participate in the conversation and uh, unmute yourself and ask questions and, and so forth. I, I, I think it's important to understand that I'm coming to you really just from the perspective of sharing my own personal struggles and experiences and learnings. Uh, but I think when it comes to this, it's like we're really all students. Um, when, when it comes to relationships, we're, we're, we're all on a learning curve and uh, we're all uh, on this kind of journey, really, of 
an unfolding, uh, a journey of really unfolding awareness, unfolding understanding that doesn't have an end point. Uh, and, and, and if there's really one core takeaway that I wish to impart today, it's, it's that, that really the kind of most important attribute uh, or orientation uh, from my observation in, in, in partnerships and in, in, in experiencing resilience in our partnerships is, is that orientation of the student, of uh, the inquirer, the, the person that is asking, why is this occurring for me in my relationships? Uh, why is this happening in my partnership? Uh, and what is there here for me to learn? What is this difficulty? What is this struggle revealing for me? Why is it showing up in my life? It's uh, that spirit of emptying ourselves and, and stepping into the unknown uh, and the unknowing that is what enables new understanding to come into our relationships. Um, and that in turn, that new understanding in turn is, is like the shedding of our old skin uh, and the emerging into continually newer, you know, versions of ourselves. And I think that's why our relationships are here. That's what that's why they are in our life uh, is, is to facilitate that emergence. Uh, and and in, in seeing them that way, um, you know, we kind of gain the, the patience uh, and the resilience to be in the difficulties and, and the struggles uh, and, and ride them out over the longer term, which I think is really kind of what's, it's what's, it's, it's what's necessary um, for deeper uh, resilient partnerships, right? And I think of like, like, um, you know, kind of like an older person, like who looks back on life experience, right? And, or they look back on their, their long-term relationships and they see things with this kind of philosophical perspective of, uh, you know, that like, I didn't really know any better at the time. And I, I see the innocence uh, and the folly of my youth, uh, or uh, I, I see the kind of misunderstandings that I was living in in the past, and I wish I'd known better, but I didn't. There's this way that life brings us to a philosophical understanding about the human condition and human beings, and that philosophical perspective on life softens us it removes the sort of hard edges and it's what enables us to be with ourselves and with our partners uh, in a way that where there's space for the, the quirks of our humanity, for our, 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 our foibles, our difficult qualities, uh, you know, but, you know, li life is here to bring us to that place of wisdom and it, it's kind of built for that. But there is a way, I think there's a way that we can turn our backs to that learning and kind of hold on tight. Or there's a way where we can let go 
and empty ourselves, as I said, and, and open ourselves up to seeing what is occurring in our life as this unfolding, uh, this, this, un, the, this unfolding uh, string of events and appearances that are here, here to help us, to help us uh, emerge from these small, insecure beings that are identified with this, this body and this brain and this separate self, a separate self that is kind of insecure and needing to protect itself and uh, accumulate and succeed and acquire and all of these things like, uh, uh, emerging from that identification and all the pain and suffering and struggles that are associated with that into a broader identification with all that is. If there's, there's one thing that I observe in partnerships that are ending, uh, it's that this learning curve has, has stopped. Uh, that's not, it's not a judgment. Um, it's just a, it's just a, an observation. It's a straightforward observation. People have come to some kind of conclusion uh, and and when they do that, it it signals an ending point. And um, it's not it's not for me to ever say whether that's right or wrong or a mistake or not. Again, it's really just a an observation that I see that that is what that's what's occurred. Um, but it does it does raise the inquiry or the question well, what happens if we stay on the learning curve? You know, what happens if we stay with the difficulty and, uh, and, and look at it more deeply, not, not look away from it and not run away from it, but allow it to arise within our experience uh, in, that, in that kind of spirit of inquiry. You know, what, what is the opportunity there? What is, what is the experience there to show us uh, and to teach us? You know, certainly in my, in my marriage, um, I have learned a lot, like more so than in, in five years of marriage, more so than in 47 plus years of life, I would say about just how uncomfortable it is uh, to let go of cherished ideas of ourselves, uh, how uncomfortable it is to face, um, you know, uh, face up to our part in things, how, how uncomfortable it is to, to, to um, grow out of habits and coping mechanisms that we've cultivated for a lifetime, you know. Um, in, you know, in a lot of years of not being married, those coping mechanisms just were, they worked just fine um, because I was, I was living alone and, uh, working alone, you know, as a, not, not totally alone, but, uh, but mostly alone, you know, and, and uh, so it was fine. It worked just fine, but, you know, 
uh, then I got, I got married and, you know, suddenly it wasn't okay to just cave out and withdraw and deal with my feelings by disappearing. You know, I had to, that, that wasn't okay. Like, you know, and it didn't really work for my wife. Right. And, you know, and, and I was, and I, I had spent years saying, well, what, this isn't about you. This is just, this is what I do, you know, but that wasn't, that wasn't satisfying either, you know, and I had to, you know, look at that and look at that coping mechanism and why was it there? And uh, why was I so uncomfortable not withdrawing, not going away, you know, and, uh, and unlearning, unlearning that um, slowly, very slowly, far more slowly than, you know, I, I you'd think is reasonable, you know. So it wasn't like a, oh, I had an insight and then, you know, the next day everything was different as like an unwinding of, uh, you know, an unwinding of beliefs and patterns and tendencies that um, weren't as deep and stubborn as you'd think, but also didn't just vanish like kind of right away and still haven't, you know. And, and all of which kind of has pointed me to the fact that, um, you know, like businesses, you know, businesses don't, they don't become, they, they don't become successful in, in a week, you know, and um, our partnerships, you know, it may take more than a week for our partnerships to em emerge and mature into what they're meant to be. And a lot of times that process is, it may not be as, as pretty or as easy as, as we want it to be, but there, it is, it's worth considering that what lies on the other end of that uh, may be exactly what's needed, you know, for you, for your partner and for your business. Uh, so, um, I guess let me kind of pause there and check in and see if there's any uh, particular questions before I keep talking. <laughs> well, what I want to talk about um, next is, is um, understanding. Um, and I started by, by sharing my observation that this orientation of pursuing deeper and understanding is, is a hallmark of, I think, relationships that improve over time and that have resilience. Uh, and I want to talk about what that is, like understanding this mysterious aspect in our consciousness that enables us to experience the same things, but from successively different perspectives the same events arise and they occur to us completely differently depending on how we understand them. And uh, 
what's mysterious about that is that it's uh, it's invisible. It, it's in like our level of understanding is kind of invisible to us. And then when we experience a leap in understanding, how it occurs is kind of mysterious and also invisible. Uh, I guess the best way for me to convey or ex convey that is through some kind of examples like um one that one that was profound for me was you know with my young children uh they they're in their kind of toddler years and so when they entered their toddler years there was um we got to experience tantrums you know for um and and all of the intensity and irrational of of tantrums and we haven't like with my older daughter had real difficulties with the birth of her younger sibling and we were dealing with a lot of acting out and um in in when that first occurred it like I took it personally, like I uh, believed that my toddler should behave better. Uh, and our first response and my first response was kind of discipline oriented really. And, uh, but that didn't really work very well. And we sought out some other resources and, um, and through that search, uh, encountered some experts, really some some child development experts that, you know, explained to me in a way that just hit really home how the role that tantrums play in in helping children to regain their to overcome difficult emotions and regain their equilibrium. And I I saw that that tantrums are part of this benign system. There's a benign intelligence behind them help, that helps children to overcome difficulties and restabilize you know, themselves. And uh, when I had that new understanding, it, it changed in, a, in an immediate and permanent way, the way that I experienced my children when they were in in those experiences for themselves. And so it's like through the deepening of my understanding, in the midst of a misunderstanding or a lack of understanding, I could not be present. Uh, uh, and I myself was in struggle and, and difficulty. When understanding came through, it made space for, um, for me to be present for my children in a new way. And I love, I loved, I love this example because it, uh, it, it, it encapsulates kind of what we're up against as adults. You know, the only thing is that with children, it's, it's easy for us to see the innocence. But when we're dealing with ourselves and with our partners and other adults, it's not so easy to see the innocence. You know, it's, it's not so easy to see the way that, you know, we tantrum, you know, we struggle in those ways to regain our emotional equilibrium, we use coping mechanisms of all different kinds to deal with the well yeah to to cope the, these mechanisms right that we picked up in the past and bring into our adulthood and that we continue using uh and whether it's 
uh, the need to control or our perfectionism uh, or our avoidance or anxiousness or neediness or whatever it is. I mean, whatever it is, it's like we're, we're all uh, uh, prone to fall into these habitual difficult behaviors. They're difficult for us and they're difficult for the people that, that work with us and they're difficult for the people that live with us. And when we're living with someone that's exhibiting, working with someone that's exhibiting those behaviors, we don't, it's hard for us to see the innocence of it and to enter into that spirit of unknowing and curiosity, the humility that is needed, like the humility of emptying ourselves and entering into curiosity about what is going on here? What is my partner going through? Um, and how can I learn more about this, understand more about this, showing up, show up with more presence and more care and more concern and more interest? What are the ways that my own patterns, my own coping mechanisms are contributing uh, to this situation? Those, those are the inquiries that when we pose them of life, the answers present themselves. I don't know, I'm not saying that that's a technique. I'm saying that from experience, if we ask, we find answers. We ask, maybe, maybe it means going out and reading books or finding or talking to friends or finding a therapist or getting on you, whatever it is. Uh, or maybe it just means getting quiet, but the answers are available. Uh, it's, it's just entering in, into the spirit of questioning that is uh, the direction that I'm pointing. Um, Jason had a question. You briefly touched on tantrums. How do they support a child getting back into well-being? Uh, so this is not my, I'm not an expert in this. I'm going to share my understanding and I, Jason, I'm happy to, uh, the, the, the main resource that I, uh, used to gain this understanding as an organization in San Francisco called Hand in Hand Parenting. Um, and um, it's a brilliant organization and it's based on some work done by um, out of the UCLA Mindfulness Program. Uh, and I think it's Daniel, Daniel Weiss is the neuro um, neurologist name and he's a neuropsychiatrist basically an expert in childhood development wrote a book called the whole brain child and so forth but tantrums um, tantrums are a way that children uh, like we have they have a, a frightening or an unsettling experience they don't understand it uh, and a tantrum is the way that, it, you know, it's, let's say, stored up in their physiology and they don't know how uh, or why or what is going on. And a, a tantrum is a way uh, that, that if you could think of a fever as, as a way that the body it is an indicator that the body is fighting off a pathogen and getting back into balance, a tantrum 
is the equivalent of that. It's, it's a, a psychic kind of fever. It's a, an outward reflection of a psyche that is struggling to get itself back into balance. And, and what I learned is what, what's most helpful to children in those moments is to, is to be present, to be a, a neutral, available presence for them while, while they do that. You know, they, they can't be reasoned with in those moments, uh, can't rationalize or kind of like talk their way through that. It's just simply um, a, healthy, a healthy way that they process and move through difficult experiences. And one amazing thing that I learned was that, you know, when you have like a really wonderful day with your young kids, uh, and they're feeling closer to you than ever, it's paradoxically a time when they're very, very likely to tantrum and act out. And that, and that is because they feel safe enough to work through and process even more of their difficult feelings. And so I, I began to see that, began to welcome those experiences um, as as really healthy indicator that my child's like psychic immune system, so to speak, was doing was working as in, is working as intended, you know. Yes. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. And I think this. Hand yeah, thank you. Yeah, for thank sure. You. Yeah, th this hand in hand organization is so brilliant. Um, the the founder, I forget her name, it's something like Carol Whipney or something like that. And she's published these booklets on the emotional life of children and they just rocked my world, you know, and um, they just have helped me so much. I strongly encourage them and recommend them. We just need adult versions now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's sort of like the final sort of little segment of this presentation or talk is um, it relates to the word spiritual and why I kind of use it because it, it's a word that kind of annoys me, to be honest. It's not a great, not a great word. Um, but I kind of use it in the title um, to, you know, kind of point to something here that is, um, Something that beyond the, the kind of paradigm that we're, we've inherited, I would say. Um, the paradigm of the kind of a, a mechanistic universe driven by scientific laws, cause and effect, and, and that we're, you know, these separate bodies and brains living in this impersonal world and um uh and that that is separate from us threatening to us and from which we are disconnected in a sense in a very fundamental sense and it's it, you know it is hard to see in the world that we live in just how much that paradigm has robbed us of our inheritances, our legitimate place in, in reality, our legitimate inheritance as spiritual beings. Uh, and it's, and it, it's hard to see just how kind of man-made that worldview is how uh, how it's 
just an artifact of a particular moment in history that we happen to be living in. And it's outdated as well. I mean, what's, what is remarkable is how, uh, you know, physicists, it, this worldview that we're living in was upended a hundred years ago, but it just, it hasn't, we haven't caught up. We haven't caught up. But I don't wanna, like, I don't wanna go into some discourse or di diatribe about all of that. I wanna talk about relationships and what the hell I'm talking about when it comes to relationships. <laughs> you know, and that is that, you know, we, when we have given that worldview, we, we see our partners, our colleagues at work, our companies and our planet as things that are outside of us impinging upon us, um, that we have little to no control over and against which we need to protect and preserve ourselves and uh, ensure our own survival and manage our own insecurities and um, and what I want to point to as just a starting point, you know, because it's 147 <laughs> and we're kind of wrapping up this conversation. But what I want to plant, the seed that I want to plant is, is that uh, our partnerships, our partners only appear to us within our own awareness. They only appear to us within our own consciousness. There is no other way that it's possible. They are part of us. They are never not a part of us. It is impossible. And their struggles, therefore, are our struggles. Their struggles occur literally within us. They're, and I'm using their, um, as a, I'm using that term lightly, but what occurs, it, their, their so-called misunderstandings occur within us. And the same is true of our work, of our companies, of our clients, and of our planet, you know, and the journey as I see it more recently, and this is just again where, where I'm, where I'm at is, uh, is 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 one of of kind of shifting from an identification with this brain and body to the to one where of identification with that broader space of awareness within which this brain and body appear within which my clients and my partners and my wife appears. And as it's the shift is that partnerships it's a, it's a very mysterious thing. Seen from the perspective of awareness itself, uh, what exactly is going on? One thing is for sure it's difficult to make an enemy of something that's arising within our own being. And as I've, I've, as I've kind of moved in that direction and in terms of the questioning and the inquiry, uh, 
it's made it a lot a lot easier for me to to see where I'm holding on to that little Francesco and all of his petty needs and concerns and so forth and let that go. Uh, and, and as I do, you know, what rushes in to take its, to take its place, but I, I feel that it is something much more much, much more wonderful than self-concern. It is genuine freedom, the freedom uh, to love without cause or reason, to be joyful without cause or reason, and to be creative without attachment. Uh, and it's, It's a wonderful journey, and I think we're all on it, whether we know it or not. <laughs> so I think that's where, where I'm going to wrap things up. It's been, uh, it's been fun. I would, uh, I certainly, the floor is certainly open to any of you to share thoughts, what's coming up for you, what you're hearing. Well, good. I, I want to thank, thank all of you for being here and listening. Um, I have a homework assignment, which if you'll bear with me. Uh, my homework is to invite you, to, to let you know about tomorrow's program. Uh, tomorrow's work from home well-being program is at 1 p.m. It is with Yol's Director of Learning, Zanette Johnson. And she will be talking about cultivating curiosity for high performance, 1 p.m. tomorrow. And uh, David, how did I do? <laughs> All right, very good. I, I have a jackhammer in the, in the background, which is why I'm communicating via chat. But thank you so much, Francesco. It was really All right, terrific. you got it. It was a pleasure being here, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe and healthy. Lots of love.